What country makes the most automobiles? That's easy, Japan. Hey, I got that one right. What U.S. state has the longest Great Lakes shoreline? Michigan, I bet you, because that's the only state that has a Great Lake named after it. The geographer would ask, what is important about having a long shoreline to the people and economies of people that live in Michigan? Which boasts the greatest average depth, the Caribbean, the Mediterranean, or the Gulf of Mexico? Gulf of Mexico. Ah, it's the Caribbean, I'm wrong. That's an interesting piece of trivia. A geographer would ask, well, why is it the Caribbean? Why is the Caribbean deeper? And how does that impact the economy and the people that live there? Stop and think for a minute. Anything that happens, happens somewhere. And knowing where that somewhere is can be very important. Let me give you an example. Back in 2004, a devastating tsunami hit Thailand. Knowing where the biggest waves hit the most populated places helped aid workers focus their attention. Knowing where the epicenter of the earthquake was that caused that tsunami helped aid workers find other places that were devastated around the Indian Ocean Basin. And knowing the cultures of the people that live there helped aid workers bring appropriate aid to the people that needed it most. That's a big ticket thing. How does geography affect you? Let's think of something more personal about the place you were born. That's important too, obviously for yourself. But it was important for the medical people that came to help you. They had to know where you were and your place of birth was influenced by the availability of medical professionals. Your place of birth also influenced your friends and relatives who came to visit you. Your place of birth also influenced the economy of the place you grew up because you had to consume more goods and services. It also affected the environment of the place you grew up because after those goods and services were consumed, they ended up in the landfill. So geography does matter. But let me ask you a couple other questions. Have you ever wondered why so many Canadians take fresh water for granted? If you have, then you should be studying environmental geography. Have you ever wondered how we get bananas from Nicaragua, cars from Korea, and wines from South Africa? If you have, then you should study the geography of globalization. Have you ever traveled to a different part of Canada and wondered why they do things differently there? If you have, then you should study the geography of Canada. Have you ever gotten lost looking at a map? I know I have. If you have, then you should study a special branch of geography called cartography. Have you ever wondered how you can use a computer and maps to solve real world problems. If you want to learn more about that, you can learn about geographic information systems. Have you ever wondered why so few trees grow on the prairies? If you have, then you should study biogeography. Have you ever wondered why educating women is the single most important thing we can do to solve global poverty? If you have, then you should study development geography. If you ever wondered, I sometimes do, why some people say pop, others say soda, and others say coke. If you have, then you should study linguistic geography. Have you ever wondered why spicy foods come from hot countries? If you have, then you should study cultural geography. If you ever wonder why so many companies have their head offices in Toronto or Vancouver? If you have, then you should study economic geography. Have you ever wondered how Indian reserves have affected the cultural dispersion of First Nations people? If you have, then you should study Aboriginal geography. Have you ever wondered how a letter gets to where it's going in two or three days? If you have, then you should study transportation geography. Have you ever wondered why there's so, much, so many hot spots in the world? We've got volcanoes and earthquakes and political hot spots. I often wonder about that, and wondering about that, for example, in the Middle East. If you have, you should study political geography. If you're really concerned and care about the place we live in, about climate change, for example, and you want to do something about it, you want to learn more and understand how you can adapt to the impacts that are coming, then you need to study geography. If you're concerned about the place you live, about the people that live there, 
about the environment, about the economy, and you want to do something about it, then you need to study geography.